and we're and live. We are live. Oh my god, first session. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Cloud Explorers channel. Um, one sec. Yeah, today it's our first live on the channel. We had uh, actually not the first. This is first live with Jeff. We had another live uh, during the Azure DevOps Bootcamp, um, but uh, out that was, one um, was also in real life. So that doesn't was also count. in real life. Yeah, it was a hybrid. <laughs> uh, but today it's a, in a different format. Um, so I'm Wesley Camargo. I'm Microsoft MVP uh, on developer technologies and Azure. Uh, so I have been working with DevOps and Azure for almost 10 years. Uh, and I, I was a C-sharp developer a long time ago, but now I'm dedicating myself to Azure. Um, and today we have, uh, we have Jeff. Jeff is my, my colleague that we work together and, um, he will, uh, show you guys how we can, um, improve the security on our Azure DevOps uh, organization and by consequence on our pipelines and um, how to make it more reliable, you know, because usually we uh, always think on security about uh, infrastructure part, about application part, but we never think about uh, our pipelines and the pipelines have uh, access, they require access in a, a lot of important resources because we need to deploy them uh, uh, and we never think about it. And today, Jeff will uh, show you how we can improve that. So, Jeff, the floor is yours. Yeah, um, yeah. We're going to first to understand how we can improve security. We're going to try and hack it. We're going to break in. So, like uh, was uh, already uh, mentioned, uh, we're going to have a look at uh, a bit of security in Azure DevOps that often ends up being overlooked, forgotten uh, due to lack of attention, understanding, etc. Uh, and right now, a lot of the tools are focused on the front end uh, security, on infrastructure security, and resource security, while completely forgetting Azure DevOps and, like Wesley mentioned, we're basically secure, super securing our front door and our service elevator, which allows us to get into the office and offload all the stuff out of it very easily, um, which should be a crucial part of security is often forgotten. So let's jump in. Uh, if it decides to move. There. Yeah, there we go. So like I mentioned, I'm Jeff Sukhoi. I'm also... Uh, like Wes, part of EPAM Netherlands. Uh, you can see all my socials there. Tag me, follow me, um, look me up. I'll be happy to uh, have a quick chat. I consider myself a cloud consultant with a focus on architecture automation and security. Uh, my specialization revolves about everything Microsoft related. Um, and within EPAM, I currently have the role of a senior architect. And I'm part of Wesley's team as well, the, the same team that Wesley is part of. So that makes it even more awesome. So today, so we're gonna go uh, through a bit of an introduction and a goal. Why am I showing this? Um, then we're gonna brush up on what is actually a lateral movement attack um, for people who don't know or kind of forgotten. And for those who do know what we're actually uh, giving here bit of our uh, secret away what we're going to do, basically. Then we're going to jump in into a, an example organization, um, uh, Asia DevOps organization. This is our demo setup. It's, it's important, I think, to understand um, the complete impact of the whole hack um, by first showing the whole organization. Then we're going to check through, OK, what data can uh, be spilled through this uh, hack? What, what, what is there to, to take ba based, based on our permissions organizations? Then we're going to do the actual hack. Um, and then we're going to check for actual data spillage if it's the same or not. We're gonna, and we're going to top it off with some countermeasures, implications of the countermeasures. 
and sum it all up in what I like to uh, call the good, bad, and the ugly. Let's jump in. So, why am I doing this? How, uh, uh, sorry, what am I doing? How am I doing it and why? So, well, what? We're going to emphasize the importance of zero trust and list privilege. So, this, these are security concepts that are native to cloud. Um, and they should always also be applied to systems like Azure DevOps products, like Azure DevOps, GitHub, et cetera. Uh, well, we're going to demonstrate an unconventional lateral movement attack inside Azure DevOps. Why? I want to create sufficient awareness for the fact that security in these days is everybody's responsibility. Uh, security no longer um, resides with the security team and for a very simple reason because we're going to end up with something like this. We're going to have dev and ops pooping out create rainbow and a very, very sad security guy who, even if it's rainbow, it's still shit. So yeah, we it, don't it, want it the security guy. To... <laughs> and uh, Jeff, can you move a bit more on uh, the zero trust uh, uh, principle? Yeah, the zero trust principle, uh, well, I'm not going to go into like great lengths of details, but to, to at least uh, have an understanding what that means. Uh, zero trust means that at every step, at every part of the application, because oh, <laughs> uh, of the because every application consists of many components that we uh, don't trust. These components, we always verify their identity. So if there's a small component of our application or solution that talks to a different component, we always make sure that before this uh, communication can happen, that uh, the identity of both of these is verified. Uh, so uh, if, I think best way of explaining this is we used to have um, uh, fortresses, definitely in the Netherlands, uh, with a big wall around them. And when you pass that wall, inside everybody kind of trusted each other or at least trusted you to be semi-safe. Um, that's also how the traditional uh, security used to be in data centers or still is actually and for the cloud we can't do that we don't have this huge fortress wall around it and even if we would have there are new technologies like a drone which could just fly over the wall or an airplane or whatever um, so similar uh, is the case for uh the cloud technology versus the data center technology and we top that off with least privilege which means you only get permissions to what you need instead of just permanently giving you yeah well this guy could need global administrator permission so we will give it to him for all his life even though he will be probably using it once a year uh, which also should help reduce um any kind of data uh, spillage or uh, if that person is going to be hacked and to be honest in the cloud it's not the question of if it's the question of when you're gonna hack you're gonna get hacked so and the same goes for azure devops there is going to be a certain moment in time that your uh, organization azure devops organization will be compromised maybe to a developer maybe to other means so let's see how we can protect it as much as we can but first, by showing what can be lost. So, a uh, quick brush up, a lateral movement attack. Uh, very, very com complex way of explaining it on Wikipedia. Basically, what it means is uh, we have a, the red computer that you see there is outside of the company's perimeter. That, that's, that's our hacker, basically. He manages to infiltrate into one of the computers on uh, inside the perimeter and use that computer to move sideways through the network uh, looking for other computers hack into those use those to uh, move further and further infecting the whole network we're gonna do uh, something similar but within uh, within azure devops here so let's move to the example organization so we'll have a uh, five five azure devops projects where i have some storing of codes using pipelines using library variables um, this is just an example what, what the, that I like to use. Um, imagine we have the demo uh, Jeff organization. It has two projects containing code, pipelines, everything you're used to. Um, 
uh, and those are classified as internal applications. So they're important to this organization. This organization would not be happy if that uh, the source code of those applications would be leaked to the internet. And we have the uh, in the middle the My Shuttle project, which we're going to dive in during this demo. Uh, we're going to use and abuse as much as possible. It's classified public. It, you can imagine this like the corporate website, static website. It contains public information. It's not cool that this would end up on the streets, but it doesn't impact that company uh, from a data perspective, at least uh, that much. And on the right side, we'll have two projects, Parts Unlimited, Smart Hotel. Again, just random names generated, um, which will uh, uh, be basically our confidential classification projects, which we really don't want to uh, get leaked. Um, so now that we have our basis set, let's jump in further. So we have three guys, Abdijan, Abdul, Abdul Hank, who are working on the MyShallow project. They have a regular Azure subscription um, with some environments there, code, repos, et cetera, nothing fancy. So now we have somebody who looks like, I guess, Wesley, who comes into place. This is our hacker. Sorry, Wesley, you're screwed. And you're not, you don't have your hacker glasses on today, by the way. <laughs> and your hoodie as well. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the alter ego of us. So he manages, for whatever reason, to get break into Hank's computer. Hank's computer has sessions to the, my, my, my shuttle project. So it's, it's kind of safe to assume from a data perspective that that hacker should have access to the my shuttle project, the repos, variables, pipelines, and perhaps if he's uh, a bit of a decent hacker, access to the environments that Hank has access to. So this is what we would assume from a permissions perspective. Uh, we're looking here. Hank only has access, like Abdul and Jan in this case, but H Hank is kind of screwed here. The other guys. Uh, change the password, I guess, more often, or you actually use MFA, uh, but Hank didn't. And his uh, computer got hacked. So based on his permissions, it's safe to say, okay, he has permissions to the My Shuttle project. So a worst case scenario, everything related to the My Shuttle is hacked, right? And that is it. So we're kind of safe because all the important stuff uh, from the confidential for, uh, or part and Let's let's move up. Uh, let's move back a bit. So uh, from the uh, internal only and the confidential projects, that's kind of still safe, right? Well, if this DevOps project uh, organization is not configured correctly, it might not be the case. But let's find out in the demo. So are we ready to hack time? So let's jump in. Um, gonna switch out. Oh yay! panic and we're gonna go to Hank and Hank has already been logged on as you can see Hank at devjazz.nl best company ever <laughs> um, are they hiring uh, no they're non-profit I'm sorry oh, okay. <laughs> They, they, they hire hackers <laughs> to show them how to do their stuff so as, as explained uh, Hank only has access to the whole project and to give you a bit of understanding of how the um, whole organization looks, we're going to go for an administrative look as well. And we're going to have a look here. So this is, oh, I'm sorry, the, on my demo admin. And you can see the whole organization. This guy is an administrator. And you can see all the Azure DevOps projects that we have here right now. Again, all of them are generated. All the data that you're going to see here is super fake. Any passwords or... Stuff like that's also super fake. So this is the actual project. Uh, sorry, the actual uh, organization. And this is the actual project that uh, Hank has access to. So we're going to go through the demo. We're going to have a look. OK, if, imagine I compromised. I'm the hacker, not Wesley. Um, and I compromised Hank here. And uh, what are the first thing I'm going to do? I found out that he's using the demo GF Azure DevOps organization. First thing that I'm going to look for is, OK, what else is in that organization? And that's basically going to the highest level possible. Let's find out which projects 
um, this organization has. And I already prepared uh, four step pipelines here to demonstrate it to you. But to be honest, if I was really trying to hack this guy, and this guy has contributed permissions, by the way, uh, I missed showing those. Let's double check those as well. So he has contributor permissions to this project. So I'm going to hack somebody with contributor permissions. Um, I would look a, to existing pipelines and try to hide my scripts there because it, it will be part of his daily jobs, to, to, the, the daily tasks to go to um, uh, to, the, to the DevOps organization, to the DevOps project, open pipelines, do stuff with pipelines, do stuff with YAML all this kind of uh, stuff. So it won't uh, be suspicious behavior in this case. So, but to make it a bit clear, not to hide it into some fake pipelines, so just uh, roll it out into four steps. So first steps is we're gonna go and list all the Azure DevOps project. And to do so, there's a, actually a two-step method here. So. The first step, uh, step, and you're going to see this step uh, uh, or this this little part in pretty much every pipeline I'm going to show you is we need to authenticate to the Azure DevOps API as our permission. Jeff, I think we lost your. Hello. Hello. OK, now you're back. Oh, okay. Your, your verse and camera gone, but the, the the screen was still working. Okay, so where do you uh, where did you lose my sound? When you started oh. to explain about the script. Ah, the most fun part. Okay, so we run back, and like I mentioned, uh, while I was talking to my screen and nobody was listening, so thanks thanks for no notifying us about that, by the way. If that happens again, please let us know <laughs> that I'm not talking to my screen because so far the screen has not talked back. Um, and I would be worried if it would. Uh, so the line 22 to 29 is a header that uh, allows us to do authentication on the um, Azure DevOps API. As through the user interface, we can't see anything where we think we're secure. We're, we're this uh, from a hacker's perspective. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk, uh, query the API through this URL, which basically goes to APIs projects and lists all our projects. But to do so, I need an authentication token. Well, every pipeline that is run within Azure DevOps actually contains uh, a way to expose that authentication token, and it is done by adding this environmental variable and to literally this notation and system token. And because I'm using PowerShell, it's um, done in this way, but any other programming language has an example um, in the documentation on how to do this properly, CLI, bash, etc. So we're exposing the system access token to this piece of script. And the script is in line, but it can also be a separate file. It doesn't really matter. Then what am I doing? I'm creating a base, base authentication header the same way that the PAT token uh, authentication works in Azure DevOps, for those who are familiar. I'm adding it, uh, creating the header object, and then when I'm invoking the REST method to this API, it gets uh, added as a header. So in the meantime, I'm going to kick it off, run pipeline, and finalize my story here and why exactly would i need that token if this is so dangerous why well you have that available on, on it, azure devops it's a good question it's it's by design in the, this pipeline um uh runs uh or, or actually the whole purpose of these pipelines is to build a uh, piece of application, build a uh, piece of code, compile it, um, deploy something to Azure or any other kind of environment. To be able to do that from a from a um, modern point of view, it needs to pull in the code. It needs to um, access all kind of um, information that is already available through the repositories, for instance, uh, through the project properties um, in, in a pipeline. So that's why, by default, there is like a system account 
that runs in the background when you start a pipeline which allows this pipeline instance to access all that information, pull in the code so that it could actually compile it into an application, build it into an executable or a jar file, or um, access the um, infrastructure's code to pull it in and pass it, for instance, to Azure to um, um, create infrastructure. So that's why the, this token is there, and it can be abused with in, uh, with a bit of playing around and wrongful configuration on Azure DevOps. Mm -hmm. So basically, that to extend the functionalities of Azure DevOps. So yeah, to well, at a certain point, if we um, a best way of explaining it in a non-technical way, if we want to drive the car, we need keys, right? So in this case, if we want to build an application, we need access to the uh, source code of that application. If we want to deploy infrastructure as code, we need access to those files that define that infrastructure as code. So that's why it's there, and, and it's there by design. Mm -hmm. uh, and it has quite neat, decent permissions by design as well. So, mm -hmm. so what we're doing here, uh, Sorry, yeah, <laughs> I was already miles ahead in my head as usual. So when we do the REST method, what we're going to go is just go through the response of that uh, REST method. We're going to see if we can find out project IDs, list project IDs and project names. In the meantime, the pipeline should be done running. So let's go ahead and see. So, and this is where it starts getting interesting. While we still have only access to the My Shell project, apparently we are able to list all the other projects here. And you can see here the IDs and their names. And I, I'm sure you trust me, but still to make it a bit more interactive and fun, I'm gonna show you the other screen with the administrator. Here we go. And you can see the same projects here. My shuttle, oh, I'm still struggling with the size. Let's put it here, that's easier. So you can see my health clinic, uh, my health clinic. The order is a bit different, but all of them are there. So this is the first step. The first step I identified, what can I access? So the next step would be to just dig in a bit deeper. Let's pick up a project and dig in into that project and see what we can find. And this is, this is where this step uh, two is all about. So I'm gonna, Start it right away so that we don't have to wait for the queue and everything. Go back and have a look at it. And you'll see here again the same header. It's very, very simple. We're abusing, in this case, the permissions that are actually provided to us by the system already. And the second step, and I'm not going to go into the details how to find this API CPU. Google the Azure DevOps APIs, you will find a very decent explanations about how at least to use them on this level. Uh, so that's what I did as well. I just went to the Microsoft documentations, checked it out. And in this case, I just went for one project, the My Health Clinic project. We could theoretically loop the, all these and get everything for the project. And we're gonna do that in a later stage, but just to make the script a bit more understandable and readable, I just removed all that fluff and just focused on one project. So. And what is API? Yeah, and sure, if you don't ahead. want to go through APIs, you can use Azure CLI. They also have yeah. uh, an abstraction for all these APIs to use in uh, more easy yeah, way. That's... I know that Jeff doesn't like <laughs> CLI, but I, uh, the, it abstracts the, the APIs for you and making it even more, even more simple. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and that's, I guess, why I'm not a big fan of them. It, it removes my way of fiddling with code. Uh, like it makes it. Control. <laughs> yeah, it makes it too easy to play around. But for these kind of things, to be honest, in most cases, uh, when trying to infiltrate somewhere, it's it's a cost cost benefit um, calculation. So if a hacker or a group tries to break into something, they actually cal calculate how much effort it would be versus what they might encounter there. So from that perspective, to be honest, Wesley they probably would have used the CLI. <laughs> mm -hmm. So hackers like CLI. Yeah, the easiest way. I mean, get the tools that are available to you. You don't have to like be a prunist or perfectionist uh, mm -hmm. with, with, with this case. Just get like, the, the job done. Exactly, whatever gets the job done fast. Mm -hmm. uh, le, 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 I, I don't 
I've never seen like real hackers at work. Uh, at least uh, uh, not 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 the ones that that are uh, criminally indicted. Um, but I would assume they don't have code reviews like like we do, uh, and code quality reviews, etc. So whatever gets the job done would be would be best. So I, that's my assumption. So um, yeah, same same invoke REST method, but to a different API, and we're just gonna go through the repositories again. I'm gonna see how many we're gonna have and iterate with a for each loop through all those repositories. And the, the next step, what we're gonna do is, and this is what I really personally like about this, this is a really nice thing to do. So we can use, pardon me, the same system token to do a Git clone. We can set up the URL um, based on the information we just received here and pick up the access token concatenate it with a uh, add uh, with um, url um, into a git url use that url to literally do a git clone command that is it so let's see how that turned out for us hopefully the script was successful so and this and here you see the results we're getting all the repositories we're ma we're actually managed because we have three apparently of them here. It's a bit malformatted, the response, but you can see count is three. So we got my health backend, my health service portal, and my health clinic. As you can see, my health backend and portal don't have anything in them. They're just there for the example's sake that we can get multiple. And my health clinic one actually contains, oh, sorry, here, I am telling you loads of incorrect information so here we can see that the my uh, my health backend actually has one file which is readme and it's empty and we'll have my service which again has one file readme and then my health clinic actually contains an example application and we can see that verify that actually we go to the my health clinic with our administrator go to the repositories here you go backend readme file portal readme file clinic actually contains the same information so we would put it there we would see build scripts again different order so now we know from a hacking perspective so this uh method we're able to uh, get all the projects and get all the repositories in them so we can actually download all the code that is available in this organization. So if this would be a real company, they might be losing some um, intellectual property through this or losing blueprints to applications which could contain vulnerabilities that could be exploited later on, right? So now, pardon me. Um, Next step is okay. We got the repositories. We got the sorry. We got the projects. We got the repositories. What else is there available next to, of course, uh, the wiki, which we could explode in a project, dashboard summary, or the backlog, but uh, which we could really could with the same uh, API usage. But the most interesting thing here, I think, is the actually the library, which contains the variables and these variables. Uh, could contain sensitive information like service connection strings, uh, username passwords of service accounts. Um, in some cases, if this would be a mobile app, credentials to the Google Store or the Apple Store to publish applications. Um, all kind of very interesting information that, again, can be exploited uh, further on. Uh, for instance, if this would be a mobile app, the hacker could release a new version of this mobile app of this application that uh, would install a virus on all the users' computers or like uh, encrypt all their data and uh, ran, uh, basically ransom it through, uh, through ransomware attacks. So let's have a look at the, it actually finished running very, very fast, but let's, let's have a look here as well. Um, as you can see, it's quite similar as well. We have the same access token. We're calling the in a very similar method way 
invoke rest method but in this case on group name with an asterisk which will try to get all the group names and what we're doing next is we're parsing the content of those variable groups into a JSON format. Very, very simple. So let's have a look at the output. And this is where it becomes even more interesting. Apparently not, we can not only access the source code, well, we can actually access the variables which contain all kind of information. And there is, a, from a security perspective, a caveat here. Uh, and this caveat, as you probably noticed here, is, is secret is true and the value is null. As you can see the API URL, again, these are all fake data um, that I just generated. You could see the value, you could see the value here. In the app registration, you can't. And I already put it properly, I named it properly, it's a secret. As soon as you uh, mark a uh, variable as secret, you can't get the value through this uh, way of querying the API. So this is a little bit of a bright side, uh, but still, if your organization or your developers, engineers thought, well, we all have the same information, there's no point in hiding the secrets, it makes it easier for us to read, and a hacker comes in, all that information is completely gone. It's completely available. So let's verify that here as well. Again, demo admin, let's go to library, and here we have the variable group, and same thing here. So we see the same API URL, app registration ID, secret environment, SAS token, etc. Uh, and you see these three are actually uh, secrets and we can't get those values, but we can get the rest. So this is also an important note. If you're, if the engineer, if you're an engineer developer or you're part of a team that has them and they, I see this in a lot of organization, they, they're really uh, lacking of, um, they're like, well, we have all the same permission, so we're not gonna uh, mark anything a secret because it, it makes our life difficult if we have to replace the value. Please do, please do. That, it's there for a reason. It's an additional layer of security, which comes back to what Wesley asked me, uh, what is zero trust? Don't trust the system to hide it for you. Don't trust on the... Uh, authentication of accounts of your colleagues, etc., on their laptop quality of security. Uh, if there is a uh, possibility to make it a bit more secure, definitely with this amount of effort, please do. Then at least your secrets would be safe. Mm -hmm. And actually, on this, thinking about it, uh, you are reading the uh, libraries by API, right? But yeah. you, you could also get the names of the libraries, inject that on your pipeline, and then you have access to our secrets. You can't yeah. see them on the pipeline because the UI will uh, hide that, but you could export that. So even if it's secret with these, uh, you could expose the, the, the secrets. Yeah, I think, to be honest, if people like this subject from today's session, we could do a second session about that to yeah. show how... Yeah. Uh, Let's plan next, it. Next week? <laughs> I'm not sure about next week, but let's plan it. Yeah, um, sure. Th that would uh, be great. I think it's an interesting topic too. Then to, we can um, actually show about. you guys how, uh, why it's even more important to separate within an Azure DevOps project, because we're looking right now at the Azure DevOps organization, how you can secure that. There's inside an Azure DevOps project, there's a very good reason for certain level of permissions which are not often overlooked as well, where even if this configuration that allows for the current hack um, is set correctly, you could still get away with getting some kind of secrets, which could still impact your organization in a very, very negative way. But yeah, let's park that subject. You're completely correct. We could abuse this pipeline to get, uh, get the act, but through the APIs, they are secure. So through this method, everything that's marked with secret is so far secure. Everything that isn't, it's there. But we could get the name of the variable 
so we're kind of halfway there. Uh, or worse, you there. could also take the key vaults, the variety, the, your secrets from key vaults, and yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely. it it needs we need we need a new session just for this. Let's let's jump into that one and. Uh... If everybody, if, if people, uh, whoever is watching right now um, or, or is going to watch it later on YouTube, uh, would like to have a look at that, uh, shout out. You can do it in the chat. You can uh, contact us basically through our social yeah. media contacts. And yeah, we'll definitely. Yeah, actually, we, we have a comment. Uh, Mumber Pete, uh, I'd like the VAR groups anyway. On the secret side for lucky versioning yeah, yeah this among others it's one of the reasons that i don't like uh, variable groups some cases you need them but you can't avoid and there are techniques to, to i i agree with avoid. you that they're they're not versioned but don't be uh, mistaken that the like the hack that we're talking about with, uh, for our next session that uh, using a key vault would keep your secret safe it's it's just a better way of um governance control on on, on versioning etc but it will not keep them safe you, you need probably, other measures to to ensure it yeah you will the same probably, measures that uh, you apply yes, on, the, on the library no sorry go ahead yeah <laughs> yeah you you need similar uh, measures again zero trust you need to implement more security controls there um, I do think that if you put them in a C in a key vault, uh, you will figure out much, much sooner that they have been compromised. You could at least by the tools that are available in the security spectrum of uh, Azure, um, uh, et cetera, if you configure everything correctly. Mm -hmm. that's, 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 that's my opinion on this as well. Yeah, thanks for the comment, Mumber Pete. Man, I, hope I, pro yeah. I, I pronounced that right. <laughs> so we know now that we can get basically everything except the secrets that um, uh, were marked a secret. So let's combine that together. And I call this pipeline demo scraper. It has multiple steps. One of them is actually a bit in preparation uh, for the next subject, but let's let's look at uh, while it's running at, at the combination. And you could probably guess what we could do with all the information we just received. Uh, we could export it to wherever we want. And in this case, what I did is I have a other organizational scraper, PS1, as a separate script uh, with, uh, and you can see it here, SAS, uh, <laughs> horribly typed SAS URI and SAS token and some additional information. And what this script actually does, it combines the three steps that I showed you and outputs all that information into our storage accounts that's defined by me. So if I'm still the hacker in this case, um, and I can, I'm able to do the, to inject all this information into a PowerShell script, into a separate um, task, PowerShell task, I will hide it somewhere in a biggest pipeline that I can find and just let it run and nobody will find out. So let's see how far the running goes. There it goes. Scrape a script. You could see here it found the projects. It is actually cloning all the repositories uh, from the projects. Uh, and it should go to variable groups. There we go. It goes to variable groups picks up the variable groups like we, uh, like I just showed you in step three. And I'm, yeah, there we go. Uh, and it's done. Let's have a look. So it picked up all that information. You can see it here. It added it to a uh, zip file and uploaded it using AZ copy to a storage account of my liking. And after this is done, I could, remove the pipeline, remove it from wherever I want, delete the branch where the, I created this step into the pipeline and without any proper logging and, and actually uh, scanning for this kind of behavior, nobody would ever find out. So how, how does the final result look like? Well, like this. This is our, again, awesomely typed. 
uh, storage account that I just passed the credentials to. If we go to containers, ADO upload, we can see here I demo Jeff and we just uploaded it here. So let's download it. And let's have a look. Give me a second, I'll stop sharing for a sec to get the file to the correct location. There we go. Do a bit of prep and let's move back to sharing. So, everything fine with my screen? I hope so. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool. So, if we unzip this file. There we go. It's almost done. You could, it's hiding on my other screen. So we have the ADO content folder here, the Git repos. So here's the JSON first. And the JSON actually uh, shows all the information about the uh, Azure DevOps projects. API URLs, description, um, and some additional information as well. So we've seen that, right? That wasn't, we have all the projects here and we can go into my help clinic and look, hey, there we go. All those variables that we just saw. So we get an additional data uh, and we get the content of all the repositories as well. So there you go. Um, the DevOps organization, the demo Jeff organization has been completely scraped from pretty much everything but the mark the secret files. So let's move back to the presentation and have a look what our spillage actually was. So we assumed first that my shuttle would be the only thing that that compromised but because of this misconfiguration and abuse of this that the lack of configuration uh the whole organization got uh compromised as you can see here we got everything except the pipelines but pipelines are yaml code so theoretically we got those as well <laughs> unless they're classic ones we got everything yes so what's the cause here the cause of this uh, resides in a very, very simple, uh, simple configuration. Actually, this in configure this behavior, what we've seen is intended, as I mentioned, because based on the question you asked earlier, uh, Wesley, um, there needs to be an identity that has access to all this information to be able to perform the job of what the pipeline should perform. Uh, however, this identity in the in this configuration uh is shared it's on a project collection level it's called the project collection build service and between brackets you'll have the name of the organization and if that's configured uh by default that uh identity is a single identity that has access that that, that runs all the pipelines disregarding the project uh, based on that identity we can just go uh, outside of our project and scoop up all the information. And the result is the demo possible abuse. So how do we fix that? Well, there are a couple of countermeasures here. Um, there are actually two of them right now. Uh, one of them is uh, limit the authorization scope for non-release pipelines. The non-release pipelines for, for, for people who are um, not very familiar with the very technical terminology that Microsoft used, is the YAML pipelines, just a modern version. And the other one is for release pipelines, which are uh, built with a GUI, uh, which are considered the classic version. And there's an additional set uh, of permissions that we can set, the optional addition, uh, which is protect access uh, to re uh, repositories in YAML pipelines. 
and I'm going to show them to you. A warning, there's no save button for these, images, for, for these settings. As soon as you enable them, they will be active at that point. So let's have a look at the solutions here. So if you go back into the organization, this is our administrator of the organization. We go to organization settings and pipeline settings, and we have actually these three sliders. So first one, second one, and protect access to repositories. And this one is actually quite interesting. Uh, what this one does, it uh, breaks the direct access from the YAML pipelines to the repositories. You would need to authenticate them separately. It's a great article. We're going to link, by the way, all the links at the end, um, which is described here. Protect a, a repository resource. Uh, this literally goes into the configuration needed if this setting is enabled, uh, which if we go quickly through them. Uh, access all, uh, to all pipelines is turned off to four protected resources, which means that, uh, where's the great sentence? Um, here you go. You can also set the repository to only be used on specific pipelines. If we enable that, we would need to go pipeline by pipeline, repository by repository, and explicitly allowing permissions to that repository by that pipeline in question, which should secure, give you even an additional uh, level of security. So we enable these. I'm not going to enable this one because then I will go need to go through a whole approval and click process. But what I do want to show you is with these two enabled, we're going to go to our great Hank account again and pipelines. And we're going to just do the first one because if we can't list the projects, we're pretty much not able to uh, do anything else with the projects either. We're going to start it and see what information we're going to get. When it's running, we have another comment from Mumber Pit again. Uh, and he said that I, my pronunciation is correct. Uh, the open resources are a PITA with the job access token on older tenants with repos included in the job the job access token. So yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's complicated uh, because they realize maybe uh, Jeff knows the data. I, I don't remember exactly, but I like two years ago, they May, realized May, the problem. <laughs> May 2020, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like somebody had problem when they enabled that. Um, but they realized the problem probably before and then they solved this. Uh, but if you have, you still have a, something old, some legacy team project that was created before this, probably it's still enabled. And then yeah. if you enable that, probably you break uh, not all, but you good part might of your break pipelines. something. Yeah. So we'll get there. We'll get into that after this. So mm -hmm. um, Wesley is getting a bit ahead of uh, what I has planned. <laughs> but I, I <laughs> no, it's OK. It's based on the question. So um, I'll, I'll um, Mr. Man Bear Pete, I will uh, uh, show it in a sec. Uh, what we're talking, what you're talking about, and yeah, you're correct. So, jumping back to the demo, we have the list projects, and we now only see our own project. And I can guarantee you, I'm not going to run the other pipelines because it's going to be a waste of everybody's time. But you won't be able to uh, see any um, of the libraries. You won't be able to see any of the repositories because uh, if the project is itself is not visible, it will actually say, "Hey, the project doesn't exist." You're going to get an API error issue. So that's that's actually quite simple. The solution is, uh, sorry, I'm in the wrong screen. It's just enabling two sliders. Well, those sliders do have um, impact. What the counter measure does, this slider do, is instead of having one single uh, build service identity for the whole organization, a individual identity is created per project and that identity has access to information in the project but i with with the optional um security access uh slider for the git repos you could actually even limit that build service even more to specifically explicitly um give it access to 
where it needs. Actually make it least privileged. That's what we're talking about at the start of, of the presentation. And the naming is quite similar, quite simple. It's just the name of the project, build service. Let me jump back again, sorry, uh, to give you an example of um, of such a, let's pick up my shuttle. And the best way of seeing it, the easiest way of seeing it is to the pipelines and actually in the libraries because you could easily click on security and here you see suddenly we have uh, two services so if you've never ever enabled those uh, sliders you would uh, normally only see this project collection build service as soon as you once enabled those sliders uh, this one appears and it will stay there and the sliders well, by sliding back and forward will uh, will decide you will decide by using those sliders what to use the my shuttle build service or the project collection build service enabled is this one disabled is this one um, so we solve the problem with account measures by basically making it more least privileged on a project level but it does have an implication and that's what uh, what you were talking about Wesley is uh, you have some stuff that could break first is the artifact permissions to organizational scoped feeds you will need to give those permissions manually uh, to the project build service in your question. You need basically everything that breaks is um, um, comes from the fact that uh, we went from all the permissions by default by specifying explicit permissions. So on anything that you do artifacts, you suddenly need to specify those permissions explicitly. If you have an automation uh, running with those pipelines, like I've seen this quite often, that uh, post release notes in the project wiki, you need to specify those explicitly. And the optional addition, again, you need to specify explicitly the Git repo pipelines, pipeline permission. Oh, sorry, the permissions from a pipeline to the Git repos. So let's wrap this up. I think I've showed the whole imp impact of the whole hack and the vulnerability and how to solve it. So let's wrap it up with the good, the bad and the ugly. And well, the good thing is the spillage is read only. I wasn't able to get any data modified. So whatever is uh, exfiltrated on data, I can't modify it and make it even worse. Like show some, uh, well, make, uh, yeah. Uh, the rights, the permissions, can't be elevated. I tried that as well to an API. I wasn't able to give myself more permissions, etc. Secrets, if you mark them as secrets, are secrets. And it's very easy to fix. It's just two sliders and you're done. Well, the bad here is we have unexpected spillage. We assume based on our permissions that we would only have a, a, one Azure DevOps project compromised. But in truly, we had the whole organization compromised. And I consider this very, very bad. It's very difficult to trace this kind of abuse because it blends so well with the day-to-day -day tasks of uh, a DevOps engineer, developer, and it does impact project configuration. You need to modify some pipelines when you enable this fix. You will need, even if it's minor, you still do it. And the ugly thing here is, as mentioned, the fix is available by default, so those sliders are enabled by default for all the Azure DevOps organizations created after May 2020. But it's not fixed retroactively, of course, because it breaks stuff, which is understandable. Or it could break stuff depending on your configuration. Microsoft can't assume that uh, they won't break anything. Uh, but I think if they since they opted in not to fix this retroactively, they did not good a very did a very good job or could improve on that job um, to create a lot of awareness about this. Because most projects that I know or the most organizations that I've worked with that have Azure DevOps projects created them way before 2020. It definitely May 2020. So. I guess out of the seven or eight recent organizations that I've viewed, about five were created prior to this fix. And 
did not have these two sliders enabled. And that's the whole point why I'm trying to um, to make with, the, with our stream today is to give it a bit more awareness uh, as the focus from security uh, or actually from uh, hacking uh, moves to uh, compromising and getting data, etc. From the front ends, because our cloud providers prov provide better and better, increasingly better uh, security there, it's actually moving to the supply chain and Azure DevOps is part of that supply chain. So make sure that you check for this if you have an Azure DevOps project. If those sliders are enabled, you're good, you're fine. Um, we can scare you in a different, uh, in, in, in our next session uh, uh, to double check your Azure DevOps project permissions, but on an organization level, you're good. Mm -hmm. You're good and to check. Have... Yeah. Is there any scenario that you would need that uh, slides disabled? I can't think of one personally, um, because whatever needs, what can be done, but but those sliders and they are disabled can be done, but with uh, at least privileged setup uh, for the other uh, uh, build services. So normal, uh, the, the the regular idea behind this slider being enabled is I can access anything. So if I want a uh, Git repository to be cloned in my pipeline from a different project, uh, this will be available to me by default, but enabling this kind of a backdoorish hack behavior that I showed you. This same functionality or the same desired uh, requirement can be fulfilled very easily. Just give from project A to project B permissions uh, for that build service and you're fine as well you're fine there so i can't think of anything except laziness why the slider should not be enabled mm -hmm. okay my assumption to be honest is that this, this the, the the build service is something that is legacy or might be still used by the um, uh, on-prem variant of uh, of devops of azure devops uh, on-prem version of azure devops um, and that's why it still remains there. I can't figure any way why the slider should be used. And if it would, if 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 it would be there, the documentation would mention something about it as well, because from May 2020, it's by default enabled, and it just doesn't. It gives you the opportunity to disable it. I can't figure out why you would do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and now you're talking about uh, some sort of legacy solution. Uh, new tools like GitHub uh, Actions that um, also have, it's quite similar to Azure DevOps, they are equivalent actually. Uh, you know if they also have this vulnerability or? I, 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 I checked GitHub, but they use their workers differently. And I couldn't uh, at least find uh, this, this similar behavior um, there as well. Um, I think it's partially because they don't really use an organization level um, I, uh, object to group all the projects together. They do have organizations, but those are created. I think they're called enterprises, by the way. They're created differently. So there is no build service that runs on uh, with this amount of privileges in, in GitHub. I, at least I went through the documentation also to double check. So I would assume somebody would ask about it. I couldn't find it. So as far as I am aware right now, this uh, uh, misconfiguration should not be possible in GitHub. Which enforces your test that's a sort of legacy. Okay, cool. Uh, and we have a question from Marius Constantinescu. Uh, do you know, maybe try it, if in Azure Security Benchmark V3 for DevOps, is there anything to run a Senate check? Unfortunately, the last time I checked uh, the, checked, uh, oh yeah, maybe, uh, and, and if not, if maybe, not maybe it's a sort of Senate scanner. There are repos on GitHub that actually have uh scenarios for this um uh, to go through logs and i'm really happy marius that you mentioned this because i there's one one more thing i would like to show which is a bit part of outside of the presentation but it should help you answer 
it should help answer that question. So if we go to the Azure DevOps organization and we go to organization settings and I always need to have a bit of fiddling here, uh, permissions, extensions, there should be logging somewhere. Uh, this is normally something I set once and never look back at it. Uh, so pardon me for going through the uh, policies. Because uh, you could actually, well, what I'm trying while, while I'm literally going through the menus, uh, um, what I'm going to try to explain is yeah, there is a way to um, log every event that has uh, happens on Azure DevOps, and you could use Log Analytics Workspace for it. And I would really uh, um, advise any organization to do that. If you have a seen kind of tool, Sentinel or anything else that consumes your logs, this is a great way of integrating them together with um, other kind of scenarios and uh, detecting them. But to be honest, last time I read, and it's been a while ago for me, a couple of months, I ran the V3 benchmark. I did not find anything about Azure DevOps. Uh, the same thing goes for Cloud Adoption Framework, which those two saddens me a bit. They rarely talk about Azure DevOps. bring on their attention uh, to a lot of architects, because we're looking at, uh, for instance, if we take Microsoft Azure we use, uh, as a platform, we look at Azure Active Directories or Identity Access Management System, and then we're done. Actually, what we need to look at is our Azure DevOps or GitHub or whatever other system that you're gonna use for your uh, CICD pipelines and repository storing. You should uh, secure that, um, and secure it with the same attention that that you do, that we do for Azure Active Directory and uh, um, for uh, the actual A Azure resource management, because that's often gets overlooked um, even by Microsoft. So let's see if I still might be able to find the setting that I'm looking for. Uh, users billing global usage. There should be logging somewhere. Either I'm completely uh screwed by my resolution or i can't find it so this is my azure active directory policies permissions word process is it in settings no that contains the pipeline so um this is the first time that i'm actually unable to find it uh, remove the zoom from the chrome make it smaller yeah it could be the case that the the zoom is actually screwing uh screwing with it but no i'm not sure why i can't find it it's on an organization level and yeah <laughs> this is funny that i can't actually find it permissions users that's the regular and policies no azure active directory is nothing to do with that extensions yeah i'm not sure why i'm not able to find it so i'll post it in the um, this is not on the team project level it is because you it, it at least it should be um i'm not but sure why I can on find the organization it. level yeah it sh sorry it should be on uh, on an organization level or am i gravely mistaken let's double check uh retention Release retention test settings, agent pools, GitHub team configuration project. I'm not sure why I can't see it in this, um, uh, in my demo project, but it should be here. So I will um, link it afterwards. We'll share it with the rest after I have some time to, to look through it. But uh, Maybe we can find it easily. Yeah. One more chance, Azure DevOps uh, Log Analytics. Hopefully it doesn't. Uh, 
Yeah, it won't do use coupon. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can see a lot of people actually transforming. I completely forgot how the connectors are actually called. Two options. Yeah, you can integrate it into Azure DevOps. We know that. Besides workspaces, no. Well, to respect your time, guys, because <laughs> we've uh, have have been at it for a while now, I'll uh, double check it and share it after the um, uh, as part of the links in the in the video, uh, which one it is. But yeah. Um, if we have log analytics uh, integration for the organization uh, configured correctly, we could actually use any kind of um, uh, scenario, hunting scenarios, etc., uh, hunting workbooks to see if we could um, figure out this behavior. But even then, I consider this this uh, misconfiguration if 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 it's uh, if it's there. Please just fix it and deal with the impact. Um, so it will make your life much, much easier um, uh, instead of leaving the organization level uh, build service running with, with, yeah, with quite a wide open backdoor, to be honest. And I would like to thank everybody uh, for all the questions, all the viewers for their time, and of course, Wes for hosting us. Uh, all the used links will be mentioned below the video once we post it. Um, and I will make sure to add the link to the log and any kind of documentation I can find about it. So thank you very much. <laughs> I don't know if we have more questions for, uh, from people or people want to ask some questions. Uh, yeah, Mario said that's very insightful and thank you. Um, yeah, don't, no need to thanks, Jeff. Uh, you are part of the initiative to bring this sort of content. Um, guys, again, this was our first first live uh, on, on, on the channel on this, this format. Uh, the idea is to make it more recurrent. Uh, Jeff also will be host uh, sometimes. Uh, we, I'm also have intention to present stuff. Uh, we also want to bring other people with different uh, backgrounds, different subjects to talk not only about Azure. We, Jeff and I are specialists on Azure. Uh, probably our content will be ours to this side. Uh, but that is also bring people from AWS, GCP. Uh, so if you that's watching now have some uh, interesting topic to, that you want to talk about, please reach us. Uh, I will also let uh, my contacts. So feel free to reach me, reach Jeff and propose, and then we can bring you and you can share your, your knowledge uh, on the channel and um, uh, contribute with the, the community. So thank you again. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, everybody that uh, let comments uh, during the live later. Uh, and see you later. Bye, everyone. Bye.